Good evening, good evening everyone and welcome to the Autism and University Workplace Masterclass for the Retail Sector. Uh, my name is Ben Holmes and I'll be presenting today. Uh, hope you're okay, uh, whether you're listening uh, on the Facebook, live Facebook group or whether you're listening to repeat in the group or on YouTube later on as well. Hope you're all okay. Um, I'm going to make a start in a second. Um, so I'm going to explain why we're here and get going. So this is the Autism University Workplace Masterclass um, for the retail sector. Uh, next slide please. And just so you know I will put my glasses on in a minute. Uh, I've got some sunglasses just because I'm bad with lights and stuff so I'll stick them on in a minute just so you know if you're not shot. Um, so as I've said this will be um, available on YouTube once we upload it as well so if you listen to it on that hope you're good um, maybe Covid's over by then uh, maybe not maybe it's 20 30 and you're watching this and Covid's still happening but well, we never know uh, we'll have to see won't we right next slide please just so me just rambling on so um, who are autism and neurodiversity coaching so I'm Ben Holmes, I'm the, the founder uh, of the company, we've got a neurodiverse team, um, so we've got people who are autistic, people with ADHD, dyspraxia, dyslexia as well. I'm a qualified autism practitioner, um, I'm autistic as well. I do have a lot of other conditions uh, to go with that, so I've got ADHD, um, dyspraxia, OCD, um, couple of anxiety disorders and a bit of depression to fill in the mix as well. Next slide. <clears throat> so again, just a bit more about what we are and what we do. Sorry, who we are and what we do. So we provide coaching and training services. Um, so coaching for neurodiverse individuals uh, and family members. Uh, friends as well, um, if they want to sort of know more about their autistic loved one. Um, training for businesses, um, so in terms of retail sector, that's where you fit in there as well. So business of all sizes, it could be stores, supermarkets, you know, any type of business. We offer mentoring for staff and management, so you could have a neurodiverse or an autistic employee. Um, your managers may be neurodiverse themselves or they may need support um, in supporting a neurodiverse employee so you know they might just not know anything about autism they might want to know how to to support them better um, we do awareness sessions say for family members business as well and lots of other neurodiversity related uh, projects as well we operate mainly online, although we can do in-person events as well. Um, one, of the, one of the reasons for online is so we can support as many businesses and individuals as we can. Um, we can't duplicate myself right now. Um, so yeah, we do uh, things in person as well. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so, why are you here? Uh, it's a good question. Some of you may know a bit about the master classes that we're doing. Some of you may not have a single clue uh, why you're here at all. So, the main thing is to learn about autism, neurodiversity, and mental health, and how it affects people with the conditions. Uh, and there's reasons for learning, learning about autism, neurodiversity, mental health, and why it's important. Because uh, it will help your business to do a number of things. So, for example, um, it'll help you to support your neurodiverse employees and those with mental health issues or problems. So, if they're getting support, um, then they will have better well-being as well. Um, so, if you improve your employee well-being, you know they're happy um, in what they're doing, they're supported. Then the knock-on effect of that um, will be increased uh, productivity. So, you know, they're happy in the job, you're supporting them, so 
there's a higher chance of them working harder. So by doing that, there's a knock-on effect, which will boost your income or help you to boost your income. So it's quite a straightforward process. You know, support your employees, they feel happier, they work harder or work better, and your income uh, benefits as a result of that. Now saying all this, it might sound quite easy and straightforward, but I know for a fact this doesn't go on in many businesses. I've seen it firsthand, I've experienced it, I've heard about it, I've seen it. So I may have said seen twice, and I'm not sure, but I'm sure to memories really bad. So yeah, I know this isn't going on in a lot of businesses, which is why we're doing these workshops. I want autistic um, people to be supported um, and to flourish, be happy what they're doing. And I also want to see businesses succeed. Um, you know, so it, it does benefit everyone. There's no reason to not learn about uh, autism or adversity, mental health, and why it matters. Uh, there's no reason not to. Um, so there we go. Next slide, please. So it's not just your employees, it's your customers. So for example, if you operate a, a store, a shop, um, you know, if you work in a supermarket, you're going to get your diverse customers walking through the door. Um, you might not know when. Um, it's not like you need to be worried or anything. <laughs> it's not like we're aliens. Um, but yeah, you, you don't know. Um, some people will mask their conditions, or if you don't know about the conditions, you might not know how to support them. Um, you know, someone could walk, walk into a shop <clears throat> and never want to go back in there again because they feel like the the needs aren't being met. Um, you know, whether it's the bright lights, whether it's people being rude to them, whether it's you know, it could be a, a raft of different things. So yeah, um, we're here to support you and your diverse customers and customers' with mental health issues. Now, if you can do that properly, it will make your customers want to visit your store more, speak to you on the phone more, you know, engage with you as a business. And if they wanted to do that, as a result of that which will help them to want to buy from you. Um, you know, obviously if you're a retail sector, you know, you need to sell items, services to your customers. Um, you know, it's quite logical, straightforward as to why. Um, so yeah, if they buy from you, obviously then that will help you with your profits. It will boost your income as well. So, hope that explains that and I will go over this um, every now and again because I know it sounds very easy and straightforward I don't want to be um, you know repetition with it but I know this doesn't happen in a lot of places a lot of places just still aren't sort of clued upon it so how will the master classes work and what will will we be covering let's get a little drink a second so we're here Monday to Sunday so Monday is what is autism, uh, Monday's today, um, what is autism, in case you're joining on YouTube, you might be watching it on a Saturday, and that'll mess things up then, you'll be like, oh, what day is it now? Um, yes, yeah, so what is autism, what is neurodiversity, strengths and struggles of autistic employees within the retail sector, or retail industry, whichever words you want to use. Tomorrow, Tuesday, is a recruitment process of hiring um, you know, recruitment process and hiring autistic staff in the retail industry. And then on to Wednesday, you're looking at other neurodiverse conditions. What is ADHD? What is dyspraxia? What is dyslexia? Um, and the strengths and struggles of these other uh, neurodiverse uh, conditions, these, these employees with, with the neurodiverse conditions. Um, and then recruitment process of hiring them and retaining them as well. So on to Thursday, uh, we're going to look at what exactly is mental health and how you know this affects your employees, um, customers, and then a bit of a recap of the last of the last four days. And then on to Friday through to Sunday, uh, we'll be doing some interviews and we'll also be explaining. Um, what else we have coming up in the future, which are beneficial to you. Um, next slide, please. So I'm going to have to put these on, of course. 
I'm as blind as a bat. Um, and the lighting's bright as well, to be fair. So, how much does it cost to hire a new employee? Um, and you'll see why this is relevant in a minute. So, in the UK, this can cost on average £3,000 to recruit. Training can be over a grand uh, and numerous other costs as well. Obviously, you know, in other countries it may vary. The journey from America, Canada. Um, pop it in the chat if you're on the call now, if you're watching on the replay, you know, say where you're from, say how much it, it costs for your country as well. How much does it cost to replace an employee? Um, so we've got some stats on that in a second. Uh, so in the in the UK, the average cost of employee turnover, which is based on the average salary, is around eleven thousand per person. Um, other so other sources say that it costs over thirty grand, or thirty thousand pounds, should I say, if you're from a different country, you wonder what does grand mean? Um, to replace a staff member, others say that replace an employee can range from one and a half to two times the employee's annual salary. Uh, the employee's annual salary. I'm mixing my words up there, which I think is a dyspraxia trait. Some figures are even higher. Um, now just, just on that, um, just on th those numbers there, if you're a big company then those figures might be astronomical compared to that. If you're small, small outlet it might be a bit less. But the point is it, it costs money to replace an employee, it costs money to fire someone for them to leave. Um, mutual agreement whatever you want to however it, it's happened and um, so it all costs money so the point of this is surely it's worth retaining good employees now good employees may not be supported so you may lose them and um, so you may have someone who, who is good at the job but you know the they sat at the wrong desk or the you know they're getting bullied or they get oh you know all these different variations of it or the managers not supporting them um, of course they don't have the same interests and you know they're not getting pushed for, for promotions or whatever it is so you may lose good staff um, and this does include autistic employees um, it's a question there for you but I'm going to answer that because it does um, so yeah basically businesses are missing out on autistic talent so Oh, those numbers uh, resonate um, I say there's, there's a reason we put this up there at uh, next slide so in terms of autistic individuals and how many of them are working if you look on the internet you get different figures so I'm aware of that um, in terms of the bottom figure out of the two how many autistic people are in full time work? Um, you know, it's between 14 and 16. I was using 15 for a while, and I know that's a bit fluctuates. So, you know, I don't know what the exact latest figures as of today are, but they're the general ones uh, we've seen. Um, either way, I think those figures are really, really bad, um, shocking. And the main thing with that is the, the comment below that many autistic people can work and want to work but they're not given the right opportunity not in the right environment not the right support etc so yeah it, the shocking figures and i want to help change that um, now many recruiters do refuse to employ autistic people so whether that is directly or indirectly so some may say oh you're autistic or oh, she is i'm not going to employ them um Others may do it without realising, so they may not offer someone a job because they didn't give any eye contact. They could have been the best uh, candidate there, they could have had a million degrees and a million qualifications and experience, and because they didn't give a bit of eye contact, they don't get the job. Um, and I know this sort of thing does go on, um, maybe not to those exact extremes I've said there, but hopefully you get my point. Um, so yeah, it's about providing the right environment for them to apply for the jobs in the first place, to then get an interview, um, then if they can manage to get through all that, get the job and then actually thrive in their role as well. Uh, next slide. <coughs> so what is autism? 
Um, so we'll start with what autism is not. So, um, the some of these are a bit controversial. So in terms of the top one, disability in itself, the point is, and we'll get on to the next slide, it's about the autistic individual themselves. If they class themselves as disabled, that's fine. If they don't, they don't. A lot of autist people don't. Um, I subscribe to that. Again, this is my, these are my beliefs. Just don't take it as gospel. You can do your own research if you want to. Back that up. You find people saying, "Yeah, I am disabled." Um, I think when it comes to the job recruitment process, when you fill in the application form, are you disabled? It's sort of a, a tricky one. You don't know what to say. Um, you're like, well, no, but yeah, so I don't know really. I'm lucky that I've got dyspraxia, so I sort of use that one as my disability um, on that tick list if I ever went for a job again, which I won't because I own my own business, so I don't need to. But um, if I was doing that, it's just it's just so tricky. It's just so tricky. So the reason I don't think it's disability itself is I feel it's more the environment and the people around you that can make you disabled in the sense of you know, if you're not giving eye contact, you're not socialising properly, you're not talking about the weather, um, you're not updated on the, the local news because you don't really care. These things make you disabled because then other people use it against you and sort of say, oh, what's wrong with you, that sort of stuff. So that's my theory on that. Just to throw in something else as well, um, you know, as you see further on down the line here, further on down the page where it says a learning difficulty slash disability, a lot of autistic people do have co-occurring conditions, so you may have um, a disability as well as being autistic, so therefore that can get confusing for people, because then they could say, well, they are disabled, but then they might be like, well, it's not the autism makes me that, it's something else. And it, it can get confusing, and I understand that. Um, if you like more information on that, I can provide it, so always you can message me if you want to. Um, disease that needs to be cured, you may have heard this on the internet, um, it's a load of nonsense. And I've just been wearing sunglasses and stuff, but I don't feel diseased, I don't feel um, like I'm lurgy or I need to be sprayed or something, or I don't know. So I don't feel like I need to be cured, I don't think anyway. Maybe with some things, but there we go. So yeah, it's, it's not a disease that needs to be cured. Um, a learning difficulty disability, we've said we've covered that. Uh, mental health condition, similar to the disability side, you can have mental health problems, issues, conditions, as well as being autistic, so that can get confusing as well. Um, a disorder, it's you know it's in the DSM-5, it's labelled as a disorder. Uh, I've said this numerous times, I do feel like this will disappear from the DSM-5 and from any sort of records at some point. It might take a couple of years, it might take 20 years. I do feel like it will eventually go, it will be dropped. So it will just be autism um, or something like that. I don't think it will be disorder. Um, the reason I don't like that, um, again, I'm not speaking just myself. I know a lot of people are in the same boat. Some aren't, which is fine. It's about having your own preference if you're autistic. Um, the word disorder, just not keep meaning to google it again so i googled it before i can't remember what the technical term is now um if someone's put it in the chat they can do actually uh, in the facebook chat the technical term for disorder um yeah it's just not a nice word it's you know disorderly just not in order not a good word uh, and the bottom one um yeah some people think that um I would imagine they're sort of thinking when they've, if they've met an autistic person where they've got a learning disability or they're sort of, you know, they can't communicate or that side of it. But even so, autism in itself is, is not that. It's if they've got something else to go along with that or they are something else as well. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> so, different names for autism. Again, just because I say this, I'm not saying it's gospel. Um, first one, autism spectrum condition (ASC). I'd, I sort of, I don't use that, but I do sometimes if I can't be bothered to not correct people, but sort of say my opinion. I'm just like, okay, ASC. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not, 
it's the word condition that I know a lot of autist people don't like. Some don't mind at all. It's just a word. It's like, well, I don't care, which is fine, uh, which is why I put it's okay. Again, the disorder one, I've just explained that. Um, I don't like the word disorder. A lot of people don't. But again, some people do use that. And if you want to use that, obviously, that's fine. Asperger's syndrome, uh, you've probably heard of that one quite a bit. You may have had several people refer to themselves as being or having Asperger's. Um, just the reason why I don't use that is just because Hans Asperger um, was part of the Nazi or Nazi re regime. Uh, he was part he was part of sending autistic people to the, the deaths basically because they didn't look right or didn't act right. Um, so they were seen as, I don't know, diseased or whatever, just not not right so therefore let's get rid of him so I'd have probably slipped the net if I were there back in Germany to be fair I'd blonde there when I was a kid and I'd probably just fit in for a bit and then got me on revenge later on I don't know but yeah they'd probably want to send me there probably when I was a younger kid I'd probably done something and be like oh let's, let's get rid of him but yeah that's, that's why I don't like that so I don't like to be referred to as Asperger's but a lot of people do like to refer to as that. So to contradict what I've said, if you want to refer to yourself as having that, then that's your choice. Because one of the reasons for that is some people say, well, they've been diagnosed as having Asperger's, so that's what I want to stick to. And that's what I was told, so I don't want to change that, which is fine. Some people just like the name. There's other reasons for liking it as well. Um, some people don't like the word autism, so they prefer that. So it, there's lots of different reasons, but it's just... The key word is ask them, how do you want to be referred to as, should I say. High and low function autism, uh, again, this one is used a lot. Uh, I know a lot of people use it, um, and I get why they use it. Sort of helps them, but well, there's various reasons. One is they've been told it's that, and other, you know, it's used in technical terms, or it helps them distinguish between one person and other. The reason I don't like using it, and a lot of people like me, is... One from the high functioning side, um, you know, if you're struggling with something, people may say, yeah, but you're high functioning though. So you're not struggling with it that much because you're high functioning. So uh, just get on with it and stop complaining. So all right, I'll do that then. And then you're still struggling you're like, nah, I think it, there is more to it than this. The low functioning side can have the, the opposite. Um, you know, someone could be classed as low functioning they might not be able to communicate, for example, uh, sorry, verbally communicate, uh, non-verbal is the word I'm looking for, um, they might have other issues, and people may tell them you're low functioning so you can't do hardly anything or you can't do X, Y and Z, you can't get a job because you're low functioning, um, they may put it on the application form, I've got low function autism, and someone, read, someone might read that and think, oh, I'm not hiring them, because that does happen, that sort of thing does happen. It shouldn't happen, but it does. Um, so yeah, that can have the opposite effect. The high function one, it could be, you know, I just want a bit of support here, a bit of understanding. In some cases, a lot more than that. I'm being a bit blase with that, a lot more than that. And on that low functioning, um, I want to say a bit of it's probably a lot of. Low function could be the opposite. It's like, well, I do actually want to work. I want to go out to my own. I want to learn to drive. And people say, no, no, you can't do that because you're low functioning. So that's my reason behind that. Um, I said I don't speak for everyone. So the word I like is the bottom one, just autism, autistic. Um, yeah, I just like that one, so there you go. So as I've said, it's personal preference. So it's up to the individual how they want to go with that. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Bit on autism history and prevalence. Um, the word autism comes from the Greek word autos. Autos, I can never say that word, autos, which means self. Such a simple word to say, I don't know why I get confused on that. It has been around for as long as other humans have. Um, it did just develop 20, 30, 40, 50 years ago. It didn't just mutate, it didn't just happen. Um, numerous people throughout history have been autistic, uh, many famous people or successful people as well. Um, but it's new in terms of people understanding it and a lot of people still don't so we're still quite a few years off that happening to be honest 
be another 50 years before we even get there. I, I don't know. Um, certainly what happened in the next year. Um, could be, it'll be several years before it starts to real, really kick in. A lot of work has been done already, but there's still a lot more to go. Autistic people are born autistic and will die autistic. We don't just like lose it after a bit or get rid of it or have it jabbed out of us or whatever. Um, prevalence rates are different in different countries. So the UK, uh, some will say 1%, 2%, 1.1%. So I've just said over 1% just to, to appease that. Um, 700,000 is a figure that's been banded around over the last few years. 700,000 people in the UK. Um, probably higher than that now. In America, it's over 2%. Some say 1 in 44, some say 1 in 57 or 58. Um, some say like 3.5%. Yeah, it's just more than the UK. Um, the re one of the reasons could be diagnostic criteria, the speed of people getting diagnosed, how they do things differently, and a bit of, it could be a bit that there are more people in the country. It could just be that in the state as well. Um, various factors for that. Uh, next slide. <clears throat> Autism myths. Uh, we're not all autistic. That might be a bit of a shocker to you. We don't, you know, we don't just have a little bit of autism. The best way I describe it is you might have similar traits. So you might be organised, or you might like routine, um, or you might be a little bit anxious or have anxiety or whatever. Doesn't mean you're autistic. Obviously, you can be, but that's be a lot more. That's been a lot more into it in it than that. There's a lot of different criteria to be um, to get the autism badge. Um, I'm a bit sarcastic there, but yeah, yeah, just be labelled autism to be autistic to be accepted for who you are. Um, so yeah, um, we're not all autistic. Uh, I've had that said to me a few times, um, we're all a little bit autistic, no. And at the end of the day, as I say, we're not aliens, we're not zombies, animals, we're, we're human beings, just have a different brain wiring, so therefore we're going to be similar to you in some ways. Um, so there you go. All autistic people do not have a special talent, um, many do, um, exceptional talents, some don't. So, you know, I know some autistic people don't like the whole autistic genius thing because they're like, well, I'm not. And it's annoying because people think I should be like amazing in maths or science or whatever. So I get that side of it. But then some, some are um, as well, as can be non-autistic people. You know, anyone, I won't say anyone could be a genius, obviously, but it doesn't matter whether you're autistic or not, you can still be a genius. It's not caused by vaccines. Um, I've had both with COVID jabs. Um, I think I've caught a bit of autism along the way, but yeah, so all that vaccine stuff, stay away from that. I'm not telling you what to do, but it's just nonsense. Um, it's not a childhood condition, so you don't grow out of it. Um, although I thought at one, I didn't know I was autistic when I was younger. I died when I was at thirty. Um, I thought that I'd get when I was about ten, eleven, twelve, and I realised not everyone had anxiety without actually knowing what that word meant or was I sort of thought oh I'll just go out of this one day I'll just magically be able to do everything like everyone else and sort of not get anxious or anything like that but it didn't happen so um, there you go autism anxiety yeah, well anxiety I'm, I'm drifting off the anxiety you know you, you can come and go for some people autism does not um, it's not been proven yet anyway, maybe one day someone will say, oh, I've got rid of my autism, but I'll then we'll start that. Um, cannot and should not be cured. Um, maybe if I don't move on from the slide quick enough, I'll need to be cured, but there we go. Uh, next slide, please. <clears throat> so characteristics of autism, not every autistic person has every one of these characteristics. Restrictive and repetitive behaviours and movements. Um, a lot of autistic people have those sort of things. It can manifest in different ways. Um, I'm clicking my pen at the moment. I'm, I'm going to stop doing that because that's doing my head in. Whether you can hear it or not, I don't know. I'll pick it up in about two minutes and carry on. And then I'll have to put it down again. But yeah, um, 
yeah, repetitive uh, movements, behaviours, so whether it's tapping, shaking your leg, um, some do head banging, which obviously I don't do and I won't advise. So that's on the end of it where it can become, what's the word, dangerous for people. Um, pacing up and down the, the house or the street or whatever, that, that could be a common one. Um, so yeah, there's lots of different ones there. Uh, next bit, please. So lacking uh, social skills, social interaction. Some of these people are fine or may appear fine. Either um, many struggle with that. They don't like parties, just all the sensory overload, too many people, um, too many people to ask them how they're doing and um, what's the weather like sort of thing. Um, next bit, please. <coughs> Limited interest in diet. Um, and generally being flexible in terms of timing things like they might, someone might say oh do you want to do something at 3 o'clock they're like oh no I'm doing such and such um, which is logical as well but they might be more inflexible than, than the average person limited interest they might have been interested in a set few things they might not be bothered about general topics like the news and sort of what's going on in the world although some are um, again we're all different so these are just examples. Uh, next bit, please. Dislike for change or disruption to the routines. They might like to be regimented, which there's reasons for that. It can help with anxiety. It can help them remember what they're doing, make them feel better about themselves because they're actually in a set pattern of doing something. There could be OCD elements where you just got to do certain things. Um, <coughs> change. A lot of people don't like change, but with autism it can be really bad. It can be so-called little things that can cause them issues. Uh, next bit, please. Difficulty with eye contact, or they may display unusual eye contact. So they may stare at you for too long, however long it's too long. Um, they may not look at you at all, look down the floor or look everywhere, anywhere but you. They may look at your mouth instead of your eyes. Um, some people do that, it helps them concentrate better and, and listen to what's being said. Um, yeah, next bit please. Extremely passionate about specific topics or objects, so special interests, they refer to as that a lot of the time. So, they might intensely like a sport, they might intensely like a TV show and know everything about it. That's not saying other people can't, because many people do, but it's more common with autism that they have a set range of topics that they're really, really interested in, and then they're not bothered about some others. Whereas other people tend to be more generally interested in a lot of things, and some they like more than others, whereas the autism tends to be more. I really, really like this and I just hate this. Uh, next bit or slide, whichever is most relevant. They may appear different, slash weird, unusual, have unusual interests, so they might be interested in, um, I don't know, the Az Aztec um, Empire, which I don't think is unusual really, but. Um, I don't know, it might be interesting just to set a set thing, a set time, um, era, or something like that. Um, and others might think it's unusual. Um, next bit, please. They may be honest and use logic. Um, that must be awful to have. Um, they can be honest to the point of, I'm trying to think the right word here, where they get into trouble, basically. Um, you know, if someone says, do I look big in this? Uh, if they do look big in it, they might say, yeah. Whereas obviously, most people have got the social skills to say, oh no, you look fine. Or, no, I'd probably try doing wearing that, something like that. Whereas an autistic person may struggle with that. Now, many autistic per people can pick up those skills and do have pick up them skills. Um, so this is just some example some some do some don't um, you could say that's the same for everyone but with autism it's more extreme is the word I would say um, 
you know, some learn social rules, but then they can take it too far where they're like, oh, I can never tell the truth because the last time I told the truth, I got told off. So I'll just, I'll just lie all the time. And then they're like, oh, no, you don't do that. It's like, okay, can I be honest then? It's like, yeah, be honest. Oh, well, uh, you smell. It's like, no, no, don't be that honest. It's like, just, oh, it's like, oh. So it can get a bit of a minefield for some autist people. Like I say, unless you've picked up them social skills. So luckily, I have a bit, mainly, I hope. Um, logic. Um, yeah, a lot of people, autist people, not just autist people, a lot of people use logic, logic, but autism it tends to be. People might have this argument many times where I use some logic and they just disagree and say, you can't do that, you can't do that. It's like, why? It's like, oh, just because that's how it is. That sort of answer doesn't really wash. You know, that's just how it is. That's what everyone else does. It doesn't really work with autistic people. Um, so, yeah, watch out for that. Uh, next bit, please. Rituals. Rituals and patterns of behaviour might be quite might appear quite robotic in certain things they do or say or mannerisms. Um, some do, some don't. They may have to do certain things at a set time or do, and some of it might not make any logical sense. And that's just contrary, contrary to what I've just said. A lot of autistic people have OCD as well, so the brain sort of tells them to, you know, you need to. You need to touch the wall and feel it. It's like why? It's like I don't. I just need to touch it. So that's in some ways not logical. But there you go. At next bit, please. They may have sensory difficulties, like sound smells. And um, they might dislike certain food smells. Um, aftershaves. Some autistic people don't like. Um, I don't like the smell of bleach or coffee. Um, smells of chilli earlier and it I don't know really I don't know what that word just got to really hurt. it hurt me actually so I had to walk out of the room but yeah weird uh, I've never smelled that bit before obviously but yeah lights um yeah lights can just because you, you struggle to filter things out a lot of autistic people can't filter out like most or many neurotypical or non autistic people can filter out background things happening and just focus on what's happening in front of them a lot of people can't, or, or ADHD, so the lights just hit him, and it's like, I want to get that light away from me, but I don't know how to filter that out. Driving is a bad one for me, driving in the dark, lights flashing, it's like, we don't, people say, we don't look at lights. Oh, I should have thought of that, maybe, I, I should have thought not to look at the lights while I'm driving. And I carry on driving, and just in my face, I'm not even looking at them, they're in the corner of my eye. They're just, just there. Uh, next bit, please. Executive functioning difficulties, so getting distracted. You can probably did that a bit there, to be fair. Distracting myself, I do that a lot. Nightmare. But that's no ADHD, to be fair. Um, can be autism as well. Blocking out other events. I've just sort of touched on that. Things happening around you, struggling to deal with that. Uh, next bit, please. Um, many autistic people are well above average. We're doing some things. But well below average with others, um, whereas most neurotypicals generally, this is not saying everyone's like this, they the same with autism, most neurotypicals generally are sort of okay at most things, might be you know, better or worse, there's a few things, you know, but generally they can do things, um, you know, unless they've got other conditions as well. So the difference with autism is they may be exceptional for recalling facts and memory well above average um, but they might not be able to remember what they're doing three seconds ago or they might not be able to cook or clean look after themselves properly things like that so yeah it's very very much up and down uh, we're not many in the middle things whereas noticals tends to be noticals tends to be more like that that sort of thing whereas autism tends to be like that sort of thing, if that makes any sense. If it doesn't, um, then you probably wonder what the hell I'm doing. Um, or if you're watching it muted, we know sound on that'd be quite funny to be fair. But get your sound on, that's that's the answer for that one. Uh, next slide, please. Autistic strengths within the retail industry. So, we're focusing more on the retail side, this is what you're here for today. 
or whether you're watching it in the future. Um, so attention to detail. So you know, if they're working from checkouts, um, you know, they may. I'm not saying everyone's like this because I mean I, I'd hate to work on the checkout, so I I would not do well at all with that. It's mainly because I think the dyspraxia side of it and the ADHD. To be fair, but yeah, a lot of these people they've been more meticulous, so it'd be like giving the correct change. If they're doing the the store, you know, um, stacking shelves or store facing, they might spot a, you know, say if you've got so many items on a um, on a shelf and one's a bit further back, you need to bring it to the front. They might be like, oh, there's that needs sorted, so they go and do that. Um, and they might care about it as well. It, whereas a lot of people might be, oh, I'm not bothered about that. It'd be fine. So yeah, that's attention to detail. Uh, next bit, please. Uh, preferring routines, so consistency and organisation um, is always good. They might say if you're doing some cleaning, um, again, if, I don't know if you clean the shop floor or whatever, they might be more efficient in doing that. They might want to do a proper job at it. Uh, next bit, please. Exceptional memory facts, numbers, events. Um, so in terms of retail sector, where that can come in, you know, stock codes. Um, they might remember certain item codes, um, which can come in handy um, if they're in a warehouse, warehouse bit of a store. They need to know where certain things are. They might have a uh, a memory where they can visually see in the head where every item in in the store should be. So they might be able to quickly get to that place. Or if a customer, if they're in the shop, the customer comes in and says, "Where is such and such?" And they've got aisle four in the middle, top shelf. I'm not saying everyone's like that. I wouldn't be like that at all. But again, I've got other conditions as well, which probably play a factor. Um, so yeah, I'm not saying all autistic people are this. Don't just hire autistic. Don't a massive hunt. Let's get some autistic people in just so they can do that. And then if they can't, they're like, oh, that Ben guy said they could all do that. So yeah, don't blame me for that. We yeah, share just this is just some of the strengths they can bring. Uh, next bit, please. <clears throat> Being different um, has advantages and disadvantages. But for this, they could provide different uh, different ideas, look at things from a different perspective. Uh, next bit, please. <clears throat> Honesty, we touched on that earlier. More clear in their communication. Uh, next bit, please. Creativity. So I don't know if you're creating leaflets or promotional things, or you, you know, at the front of your store, you wanted to jazz it up to, to make it appealing to customers. They might be able to come up with ideas uh, around that. Uh, next bit, please. <clears throat> um, intense focus on a favourite activity. Um, now, I don't want people to take advantage in this sense, um, but they may prefer to do tasks that others don't. So, all I would say is, you know, if they really want to do sweeping the floor because they enjoy it they get it stimulates them doing that they, they enjoy doing that and others are like I don't want to be doing that then it makes sense for them to do it but at the same time don't take advantage of that is all I would say um, where you're sort of saying oh you'll enjoy such and such um, even if they won't if that makes sense uh, next bit please some more strengths within the retail industry which can apply to that Punctuality and reliability, so starting work on time, more likely to um, to be there on the dot or, or early. A lot of autistic people will get there early because they'll be too anxious of being late, so they might get there ridiculously early and be like, I'm ready to work. Well, I'm just, I'm here, so, so I'm not late. More dependable to get jobs done. If they say they're going to do something, they're more likely to do it. Uh, next bit, please. And the caveat on that is if you've got ADHD and other conditions, um, that they can have their own different uh, impacts, so impact levels. So I'm on about autism purely here, not sort of any of the other conditions. Big picture thinkers, they can help the company vision and inspire ambition for others. And next bit, please. Loyalty. Um, if they're supported and treat right, you know they love what they do. They're more likely to stay with your company for a long time, and not, you know, they might even be offered a better role. Uh, sorry, uh, well, either a better or a, high, a higher paying role is what I was going to say. 
elsewhere, but they might say, well, actually, I'm happy with what I'm doing. They support me, they appreciate me, and understand me, so I'm, I'm going to stay here. Which then would save you money having to rehire people, etc. Um, next bit, please. <coughs> Fondness for rules. Again, this is not every autistic person in the world, I'm just saying in general. Um, they might take health and safety very seriously, which is, you know, particularly if you're in the retail sector, that's really important for you. You know, if there's a slip, if there's water, something spilled on the floor, the might just, might just not walk past it. Might be like, right, that, that needs to get sorted straight away. Let's get the signs out. Let's tell everyone. Um, you know, so no one's going to be slipping on the floor, etc. They may be more likely to stick to companies. I can't speak. I'm mixing words up here. I'm mixing company and policies. So I said, I don't know what I don't know what I want to say then. Policies or something. I don't know. Sticking to Companies, policies, and procedures. Um, if caveat with that is if they agree, if it's logical, if it's a silly procedure, this doesn't make any sense. They might be like that. That, that don't make any sense. Come back to the honest thing. If it does, it might be like right. We need to follow these to, uh, to the book. Um, next bit, please. Uh, not influenced by the majority. So they can give leaders a different option to yes men or women. Um, so I guess they can go against them and does go against them. But you know, if you're wanting someone in your team who doesn't just say yes, I agree with you, just because they're scared of getting told off or whatever, then they're good for you. Uh, next bit. Less emotional at times. Keyword at times. Um, again, you know, I said about the profile earlier where they can be up and down, uh, take that into consideration. They may not let angry customers bother them as much. Now, it can be extremes, um, is what I say with autism. So it could be that they really bother to the point where they have to leave the job, or they get so worked up they never want to work in that sector again. Or it might be like, well, you might be able to look logical at it and say, well, you know, they're angry because of X, it's not my fault, but I can help rectify that. So they might be able to logically do that. Again, it's an extreme thing. Um, I would say it can be very hit and miss with that. I mean, everyone's the, everyone sort of, no one wants an angry customer. I might have angry customers today saying, I don't like your talk, but, you know, you, you deal with it. Um, and I say, well, I thought it was pretty good, to be fair, I hope, but yeah. So, um, next bit, please. And like I say, all these examples I'm giving, not every autistic person will have every trait. Apart from, I know for a fact they don't. So it's just giving you more information on it. Um, so now looking at some of the struggles they may have working in the retail industry. So the first one is socialising. Again, some people, some autistic people can and can't. It's, it's down to the individual. So if in a customer facing role or working in a team, so if they're working on a till or um, I'm trying to think of other roles, um, you know, if it's sort of like in a in a shop, you know, the sales support staff and they're expected to, you know, if you go in a clothes shop um, and they're expected to greet the customer, ask how they are, and then pester them for a bit. I'm only joking. Um, well, that does happen, doesn't it? To be fair, but yeah, they might struggle with those sort of things. Um, some won't be bothered at all, but that could be just something to struggle with. Uh, next bit, please. Honesty. I keep saying this. Stating their opinion. So, <laughs> this is where a potential negative thing could be. If they're selling something that's not very good, or they don't think is very good. Um, could say if it's a clothes shop, and the customer says, "Oh, what do you think of this top?" And like, hmm. I don't really like that to be honest. I don't really like that. But oh right, well I'll not buy it then. So there's that side of it. Um so all I will say with that if you've got an autistic employee, who is that? Just explain to them why you don't want them to say that. Because if they do that, they're gonna lose money. So they don't necessarily have to say they like it, um, but they could say something like, Oh, I think that would look good on you. If it would. So there you go, bit of a minefield. Um they may say Social appropriate things, as I've just highlighted there. Uh, next bit, please. 
navigating illogical rules or policies touched on that earlier they may challenge status quo and may upset folk including managers um, all I'll say is if the policies make sense then they're probably going to follow them if they don't then they may challenge them either way explain to them why the policies are how they are and just an answer of just because I'm tell I've told you so or just because I've been told to you're probably going to get the same thing really um, next bit please plans changing um, plans do change all the time it's just natural for that to happen um, but it's about limiting that or giving them as much notice as possible if they've got a break at 12 o'clock um, they plan to do a specific thing on the break and then you come up to them 10 minutes before and say oh can you have a break at 1 o'clock instead some people are like yeah sure whereas it may bother some people whether they're autistic or not I'm like, well I was planning to do such and such but I don't care I've told you it's 1 o'clock it's like yeah so that may cause problems um, even if they don't say it does it may do uh, next bit please <clears throat> talking skills um, they may talk less like me um, they may not understand what they're meant to say so for in saying that a shop again it, it, or they may know what they're meant to say but not be able to do it which is equally as valid so I'm, they may be like oh there's a customer coming I don't really know what to say to them I'll say hello but am I meant to then go further than that if I'm working on a checkout I'll say hello but then do I make small talk with him it's judging when to talk and when not to talk uh, next bit please sensory overload I touched on that earlier with lights etc in terms of retail uh, in store music I mean this would do my if I was working in a shop and the same music playlist was on ev all day every day that would drive me insane in fact it would drive me insane right now with Christmas music I can't stand it I really can't stand it it would drive me crazy um, not literally sorry taking things literally I'd just say I'm not I don't know what I'd do <laughs> I'd just be like I can't be doing with that um, do me head in so yeah just just bear that in mind but also I know you've got your customers and your customers are very very important so if they're walking to the store there's no music on some may like music on so you can't please everyone and that's the thing about it um, you know there's got to be ways around it though compromises each way there's too many people in the shop um, store whatever it is it can just cause anxiety and too many things going off around them and again the lighting, store lighting tends to be really bad in a lot of places bad for autistic people um, so yeah next bit please and um, some more struggles uh, climbing the ladder so they may not possess the social skills to do this when I say climb the ladder I don't mean literally you know get a promotion etc they may struggle with that uh, next bit please Anxiety, mega anxiety talking to customers or working in front of them. Uh, next bit, please. Social cues and communication, so misinterpretation of what's being said and how it's or how it's being meant. Taking things literally, like I say, climbing the ladder. If you said that, they might, they might think, well, where's them? If they're in a store, you could say, oh, climb the corporate ladder. They might be looking for an actual ladder to climb um, so there you go yeah uh, I use a literal thing um, I don't know if someone says if they're during the break at 12 and um, but the person before them said you can only go when I come back and then you say well how long will you be and they say oh just 10 minutes or so and then they come back in half an hour that's something they might struggle with uh, next bit please Challenging authority if they don't agree with them could result in being disciplined or fired. Again, it, it depends if what authority is saying makes sense or not, to be honest. Uh, next bit, please. May need to do things a certain way. So if they're cleaning, they might like to start at a certain place in the store or do it in a certain order. If they're replenishing stock, they might like to do it differently to how they've been told. Um, or even talk to customers like I've, might have set process of doing that all I'd say in that is if it doesn't cause any harm to the customers 
the, the employee themselves, the company profits, you know, why not let them just do it their own way? Um, if there's set procedures that have to be in place, if it's cleaning, it has to be done a certain way, and there's a reason, a logical reason for that, that's fine. But if there isn't, you know, is it that much of a problem? Uh, next bit, please. Inflexible working hours. So a lot of retail, they might work weekends or late or early hours. The stores are open when they're open, so you need staff to fill them. Um, to fill the, you know, the, not fill the store, literally, to fill the hours um, and the slots. Some aut every autistic person is different. I know some autistic people like getting up really in the morning, some like going to bed late at night. Um, it, it just depends. If you can find a way when they're most productive, if you can fit that in within your system, then you're more likely to get higher productivity out of them. But I also appreciate it's not the whole, it's not fair on others, then if, if you said an autistic person doesn't have to wear weekends because they like watching TV at weekends or whatever. So I get there has to be a balance. And I think a lot of autistic people, if you explain it to them, they, they would appreciate that. Because we do have empathy, um, a lot of us, believe it or not. So, there's a balance, it's about getting the balance. We'll just ask them and, and find out why, and, but explain to them why. If you've, got, if you've got to work a weekend and they don't want to, explain, well, we're asking you to do this because it's good for the company, because we get most customers in on a Saturday, etc. Uh, next bit, please. So, uh, last bit here, what is neurodiversity? We'll touch more on the other neurodiverse conditions uh, throughout the week. The term neurodiversity describes variations in the human brain, and how the brain is wired differently. As I said, we're not aliens or robots. This includes how people interact socially, how they learn, retention skills, mood regulation, and other mental functions. There's a lot of debate as to which exact conditions make up neurodiversity. For example, OCD is an anxiety disorder and therefore not a neurodiverse condition. Others would disagree with that and that's fine. Everyone's got their opinion and methods behind it. It's commonly accepted that neurodiversity includes autism, ADHD, dyslexia, dyspraxia, those four, and then a lot add on dyscalculia and dysgraphia as well. These conditions are lifelong, do not go away, and people do not grow out of them. So that's where the mental health side of it, some mental health conditions can come and go, fluctuate. That's what that's part of why their mental health conditions are not neurodiversity. It's part of the reason behind it. Um, so yeah, hope that explains a little bit about neurodiversity. Uh, next bit, please. People often confuse, I've just said, neurodiversity with mental health condition. Um, and as I've just said, I've jumped ahead here, the flux mental health conditions fluctuate over time. That's one of the big differences. The term neurodiversity was created in 1998. Well, the term was not neurodiversity itself. It wasn't like everyone who started being autistic, whatever, in 1998. Um, by Australian sociologist Julie Singer. There's also much debate as to whether neurodiversity is a disability or not. We touched on the autism side of it earlier, it's the same thing with ADHD. Um, many don't like saying they've got a disability, some do. But where it comes confu where it comes confusing is some neurodiverse <coughs> sorry, some autistic people have dyspraxia, but say they've got a disability because of dyspraxia, so it depends. You know, some would say dyspraxia isn't a disability, they say it's something else. You know, some would say it's, it's learning. Um, there's lots of different things around it. But we'll get on to those terms later on in the week. Uh, next bit, please. So, that's the end of today. We're back here tomorrow at the same time, 6 o'clock. Obviously, if you're joining on YouTube, please, so, you know, hello, basically. Uh, you'd have to join at six because that'll be repeated. So yeah, join at six will be you'll be with us throughout the week. Hopefully, you can catch sessions in the group on replay if if you can't live, which is fine. Please comment and um, let me know how you're finding it, where you're from. You can say what company you represent if you want to. If you don't, that's fine. Any feedback is welcome as long as it's good feedback. 
uh, thanks everyone really appreciate you being here and I will catch you tomorrow